Thanks, Gino. I want to start my comments by saying that in 2024, if you are not already a content creator, you are really behind the game. Content creation, I feel, really started to pick up speed during COVID, which is now three going on four years in our rearview mirror. So if you have not started to already can call yourself a content creator, you already are a content creator. That's the funny thing. You just maybe don't recognize the power of your content and what you have to say. So let me break it down like this. You need to be a creator, a content creator, because you have amassed valuable insights over the course of your life, both personally and professionally. And the industry in which you work in care about those insights. They care to hear what you have to say. Okay? And what you do for a living matters to people. And so you have valuable things to say. Your customers are going to feel more trusting of you based on this content that you put out there. All right? And we actually just published uh, a email blast newsletter that that confirms that 81% of people need to feel trust with a brand before they will spend their money with it. That is why it's so critical to have trust pilot reviews, Google reviews, stuff like that. Like a lot of positive feedback about people that have worked with you because people really do look for reviews on how other how other people have been treated by spending their money with you all right but to further establish that trust if people come across a video of you as an expert let's say you're a plumber you're a mechanic let's say you are a uh, doctor or a lawyer and you're sharing valuable insights about the process of working with you through various stories telling and etc cetera, etc cetera, that is going to further cement yourself as an expert in the field that you work in and that's going to help build that trust layer and finally guys the reason why you need to be a creator in 2024 if you have not already started is these platforms that exist that we're about to get into right now will compensate you for this content they will pay you in some cases very handsomely for your efforts to put this content together. That is known as a front end payment, you know, getting paid on the front end. But you can also generate sales leads and additional revenue from people that see this content, as I just described, building trust, etc. Those people will now come to you wanting to spend money on your products and services. And that's known as monetizing on the back end. Okay? So I wanted to break down there's uh today on the on the episode we're going to cover six eight different sites. All right guys, we're going to cover eight different sites that you can currently be a part of where your content can be monetized. You can make money off of it on the front end and you can build your trust with people and get leads and make money off the back end. So the first category is called the gaming lifestyle category. And the gaming lifestyle category consists of three platforms that we're going to cover today, Twitch, YouTube, and Kick, which is uh, Kick being as a brand new one that has recently got into the mix. Okay. Now, the reason why we call this the gaming lifestyle category is because these three sites traditionally started exclusively around playing video games to a live audience and getting uh, donations and subscriptions or subscribers for people that want to support you playing the video games. But it has now expanded to be a lifestyle category. So on all these channels, you can also watch people do live things like cooking shows, playing guitar, having political debates. In the case of myself, I have a a show, a live stream on Twitch um, called Yo Snaps. And on Thursdays, uh, we do a show called Snaps Reacts where people share videos with me through Discord. We watch these videos, I watch them, and I give my blind reaction to these videos. So I don't watch the videos in advance. I literally go live, I watch the videos that people have shared with me, and I give my blind reaction. And it's funny, and it's engaging, and people have a good time with it. And that's called 
uh, a live stream. That's that's a reaction type show. I'm not playing video games. I'm just reacting to videos and having an engaging discussion with the the live chat, the people that are watching. Okay, guys. So what's interesting is just to give you guys a little bit of a breakdown here. Okay. Um, the new player in the field kick it most times people subscribe if they're going to support you for your content they're subscribing at about five dollars per subscriber on average okay so twitch is the, the 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 old player now twitch has been around for many many years and at the time of this recording they're giving each uh you as the content creator they're giving you 50 percent of each subscriber that you accumulate so a five dollar subscriber you're going to get two dollars and fifty cents and twitch is going to get two dollars and fifty cents now twitch does offer a few other things to give you people watching your live stream can also just give you flat donations they can just give you 10 bucks 20 bucks just to say thank you for entertaining me thank you for sharing this valuable information with me thank you for making my day feel happy they can just give you money and in those situations, you get 100% of that amount, okay? Now, the other player in the space, Kick, is currently giving 95% of each subscriber at the time of this recording. So they are really trying to take a lot of creators from Twitch and move them over to Kick by giving them 45% more of each subscriber. That's a lot. So on a $5 subscriber on Kick, you're getting $4.75 as opposed to only $2.50 on Twitch. Kick also does have the concept of the donations. So you can also get 100% of every, any donation you get directly on Kick. And then YouTube does not have the concept of paid subscribers. So you can just rack up subscribers on your YouTube channel, but you won't make any money off that. However, the more subscribers you get, the more views you'll get, and you will make money from the advertising on the views, like like one to one to two cents for every thousand views. But people watching you on YouTube can do something called a super chat, which is where they basically can pay one dollar, two dollars, five dollars, ten dollars, whatever amount they want. And while you are streaming, their chat message will appear on screen. And you, as the content creator, can read off the message to the other people watching. Of course, everybody can see it as well. And you can respond to that person. So it's kind of like a way that the person can reward you, say thank you for making this content, but they can also get your attention and type out a question or a comment and it appears on screen. That's known as a super chat. So at the current recording of this episode of the Ad Hero Podcast, YouTube is currently taking 70%. Excuse me, I'm sorry, I had that backwards. YouTube's taking 30% of every super chat. Okay? And you as the creator is getting 70%. So if someone gives $10, you're going to get $7 and YouTube um which is owned by Google is going to take $3. All right? That's the current structure of that. So out of those 3 gaming lifestyle categories, Kick is currently paying the most per subscriber, which is paying the least. But YouTube does not have the subscriber feature, but they have this super chat idea, which is very unique. And they're giving you 70% of every super chat. That's a healthy amount of revenue per super chat. Those can add up really quick if you have a big audience. Okay, guys. So now let's move to the next category here uh, called the miscellaneous category. The miscellaneous category is going to cover TikTok and Facebook and Instagram. Uh, of course, Instagram is owned by Facebook, so we kind of group that they have the same payout structure. Now, in both of these categories, these are your classic, you know, girls doing makeup tutorials or guys doing weightlifting videos. These are both formats where it's more based around creating a piece of content that's going to live on forever and people can keep coming back and watching it over and over and over again or they share it and it can go viral. So in both of these cases, if you make a piece of content that goes viral, for TikTok, you are currently going to get about 2 to $0.04 cents for every 1,000 views. So to put that in perspective, 
if you're a TikToker with over 100,000 followers and you make a video that catches fire, you're going to get about 200 to $1,000 per month for videos that rack up millions of views. And we did a, an episode here on THAP um, with someone that was a member of our ad symbol team. Uh, and, ex- uh, and he was also was blowing up on TikTok. It is, his name was Zach. And you can still find that episode in our archives and you can still find him on TikTok, still making TikToks every day. And his TikToks are racking in millions and millions of views. He's done very good for himself on that platform. So, you know, he swears by that platform as he did on that episode. Gina, remember that, right? Uh, So Facebook and Instagram currently pay about one to two cents for every views, for every 1,000 views, excuse me. So TikTok is doubling up. The reason why TikTok is so popular right now with the younger generation that likes to do this kind of content, because TikTok is paying two times the amount for every thousand views that Facebook and Instagram is offering. Um, so that's that's a quick breakdown of the miscellaneous category. And then finally, guys, to bring it home, we have something that I'm calling the supporters category. So the supporters category is tied into um, three platforms. One of them, very infamously known, is called OnlyFans, okay? And then you have another platform called Patreon, and then a new kid on the block called Locals, all right? And um, Gino, before I give a breakdown of Patreon and OnlyFans, I believe you just started a Locals channel for your, your community, and can you give a little breakdown of how that works, what it's called, and the breakdown of the, how the payments happen for Locals? Locals.com basically derived from a, a group of creators that felt that they were being uh, marginalized on other platforms. So they wanted to create something that would put the creator first. How they break it down is person who pays a subscriber five bucks, which is like the lowest that they can put down on the website. Um, then what happens is, is that the creator will get 90% of that. Uh, Locals keeps about 10% of whether it's a subscription or like a donation. It's a good platform, but there's a few things on there. It's just a little confusing, but you can uh, donate like a one-time donation. You can tip per piece of content, or you could just subscribe and you know you get some of the stuff for free, or you can pay for certain content that just shows up that other people can't see if you don't subscribe and And that's how that works what's what's the url for for your specific locals page again yeah it's gino giovanni presents dot locals dot com okay perfect and the twitch one for you guys if you want to check out my stream it's twitch.tv slash mjo snaps we're going to put both of those in the show notes and down below in the description below uh we'd love to have you guys check us out in either one of those places so real quick, guys, just to wrap it up, Patreon, by comparison to Locals, is giving an extra 5%. So for every subscription you get on Patreon, as the content creator, you're going to currently get 95%, and Patreon's only going to keep 5%. So Locals is giving creators 90%, Patreon's giving creators 95%. Now, this is where it gets crazy. OnlyFans, which arguably has the most brand recognition, the most notoriety, because a lot of women go on there to do like have like uh, sex pages and and scantily clothed images and things like that. OnlyFans is currently taking 80, uh, 20 percent of every subscription. So if you get ten dollars on an OnlyFans subscription, the content creator is only getting 80 percent of that. Whereas in the other two platforms, it's, it's a much higher payout. So kind of interesting, right, to, to see that breakdown. And again, if you want to build a community around what you're doing, the supporters category uh, sites are great for that because you have a people that are dedicated to you. And if they're subscribing to you, that means they're paying this amount every single month. It's going to entice you to want to keep creating content. And then you're going to keep giving value to those people and they're going to keep paying you. 
whereas with the miscellaneous category, TikTok and Facebook, Instagram, you're kind of banking on making a really killer piece of content that lives on forever and just keeps getting views and likes and you make a little bit of money off of it month over month over month. Still not a bad play, but either way, guys, it is critical if you have not started to get on one of these sites and start making content and get monetized for your efforts. And Gino, did you have a uh, question? Why do you think some of these platforms are paying a higher percentage bounty per content created? Okay, so my 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 view here is that uh, this is kind of like the Wild West. And remember, these platforms, we look at Patreon, you look at OnlyFans, you look at Kick, you look at Twitch. They, they all want to have the best creators using their platform for this content, okay? So let's take, let's just, let's just hypothetically use someone like Joe Rogan, okay? Joe Rogan, extremely popular podcaster, currently on Spotify, signed a massive deal with Spotify for his show. But let's pretend that that Spotify deal did not exist. And Joe Rogan was still just kind of doing his show, but having massive following. Every single one of these companies would love to have Joe Rogan using their platform to record his podcast. So all those people that want to tune in and listen and watch are logging into their site. They're getting all the website traffic. They're obviously monetizing a percentage of every single subscription, every single donation. It's They are enticed, like Kick right now is highly incentivized to give 95% of subscribers to people that are on Twitch. Because anyone who's on Twitch that has a large following, if they jump ship from Twitch and they start doing their show on Kick, they're going to be making a lot more. They're going to take all those subscribers with them. And all those subscribers are going to be tuning in to Kick instead of Twitch. Now, in recent times, this is kind of breaking news. I previously was under the kind of the view or the thought that if you were only on one platform, you could not be on the other. Like maybe there was some sort of contract that these really big creators signed. Like, hey, if you're going to be on Kick, you can't be on Twitch. However, I have now started to see some creators, they're on both platforms. They might be on Patreon and they might be on Locals. They might be on Twitch for gaming, and they're on OnlyFans doing God knows what, okay? And they're kind of like double dipping, triple dipping. They're getting, you know, subscribers and donations, donos as they're called, you know, from all over the place. So at the time of this recording, I think it's, to answer your question, Gino, I think it's the Wild West. I think all these companies are trying to kind of outdo one another to get the best creators on their platform, on their team. And then I think over time, like maybe give it like 24 months, you'll probably start to see all of these percentages keep getting crunched closer and closer and closer together. I think I think most of these platforms will probably end up around the 50 to 60% share, meaning the content creator will get 60%, the platform will get 40%. Because the platforms are going to keep trying to roll out things that are enticing to the content creator, you know, widgets and graphics and all kinds of stuff that make their content better so they get more views. But the, the platforms are going to say, hey, that cost us money to do that. So we need to charge you 40% of every subscriber in order to be able to support those features and bring you those those tools. So we'll see what happens. Um, that's That's my thoughts so far. All right, guys. Well, th uh, that pretty much covers what we wanted to say on content creation wars and why you wanted to, why you need to be a, a creator. Uh, we're going to be right back with some closing remarks uh, right after these messages. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the Ad Hero Podcast, Matthew. Can you bring us home with your final thoughts? Sure, guys. It's as simple as this: in 2024, you need to own your content. And you need to be a content creator. If you're not already doing it, you are behind the eight ball, guys. It starts as simple as something as just making a podcast. Start recording yourself, talking into a camera, sharing your thoughts, sharing your expertise. You've been working hard in your industry, in your product, in your space for many years. Most of you have. Even if you're brand new in, in your industry, in your space, you might have fresh ideas that no one's heard of before yet. It's time to start recording those ideas dressing it up, 
with lighting, sound, all that stuff, and then putting on these platforms and making sure you have opted in to the sites that will pay you for this really killer content. Okay, guys? Um, the platforms want the content. They're willing to compensate you for it. And you can benefit on the front end by making a few dollars for every thousand views or a few pennies for every thousand views, but it adds up. And then on the back end, you're going to be building trust, getting more leads, getting more customers. So you'll be making more, even more money from sales on the back end. All right, guys, it's mission critical. Get on it if you have not already started. And that's my closing remarks on that.